This is the Loveham Cube of Emotion or Loveham Cube for short. It is a theoretical model put forth by Hugo Loveham and its purpose is to shed light on how different neurotransmitters relate to our emotional states. According to the Loveham Cube, three key neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin and noradrenaline, have a hand in governing our emotion. It suggests that elevated levels of dopamine are linked to positive emotions like joy and pleasure while low levels are associated with sadness. Serotonin, on the other hand, is said to influence our sense of well-being and reduced serotonin levels are thought to contribute to depression. Lastly, noradrenaline is believed to be involved in our alertness and arousal. However, it's important to note that the Loveham Cube has its detractors and isn't universally embraced in the scientific community. Some researchers contend that emotion cannot be neatly sorted into distinct categories based solely on neurotransmitters. This is real. I ain't kidding. And I don't get it. I mean, alligators can't even walk fast. The dude rolling on the cart right here is none other than Garner W.S. Jennings the governor of florida at that time and i just can't wrap my hand around it like why seriously why well you may or may not have seen this image the caption of the image states that it is an extracted tooth with the nerve still attached to it however let me tell you that have seen nerves and this definitely does not look like one the nerve appears to be fatty and has the consistency of a jelly this is definitely just some thin cotton threads. Why is this rainbow only red? Well, this phenomena happens when the sun is positioned lower in the sky like during sunrise or sunset. At these times, the sunlight has to pass through a greater amount of Earth's atmosphere causing it to scatter and interact with particles in the air. As a result, certain wavelengths of light, particularly red, become more dominant and are reflected more prominently in the rainbow, while other wavelengths may be diminished. It is entirely possible to learn a skill and forgot how you learned it. This can happen in anterograde amnesia or anterograde memory loss. But why? This is because skills are part of procedural memory and they are due to retention of skills, habits and motor movements such as playing an instrument, riding a bicycle or typing on a keyboard. These skills are typically stored in areas of the brain responsible for motor control such as the basal ganglia and the cerebellum. While episodic memory formation is mostly associated with hippocampus.